This podcast is proud to be part of the Talk Sport Fan Network. Talk Sport. Powered by fans. The trigger! Johnson puts it in the air, Aiden Flynn whacks the oh! It's the oh! It's still with Lee Gregory, he's in the box, tries to screw it, is it going to be there? Oh! Yes! Oh my word! Hello, good evening and welcome to the Wednesday Week podcast um, where this week we are looking at our preview show for the forthcoming game against Stoke City in this week's edition of... Catches people by surprise now. Uh, (laughs) um, (laughs) uh, Tonight... I'm joined by Ben. Um, ben, how are you doing, mate? You know what? I was going to say, as a as a Stoke fan, not great this season, but that might be the best podcast intro I've heard. So well done, mate. That's quality. Uh, well, bless you. To be honest with you, um, it's normally the big boss, Dan, that puts it in there. So I've just tried to save him and Ash uh, a little <laughs> bit of editing. Um, so hopefully I'll get a text message at about nine o'clock tonight saying thanks for, for dropping that in. It's saved in 10 minutes. But um, yeah, good to go. Um, okay, so talked about the season already and, and your feelings on it. Um, let's kick off. Let's get right to it. Um, first question: How are you feeling after last night? weren't a great result, was it? Uh, nervous, like more nervous than we probably were a few weeks ago when we were actually in relegation. Because um, it felt like we had time, and we did have time. You know, we've we've we pulled off some decent wins this season, some decent results. Um, but it's nights like last night when we losing three nil to Swansea, who, you know, on on paper and their record suggests that they're no better than us, really. Um, you know, we've always done very well at Swansea in in recent seasons, and we fell apart. Refereeing decisions didn't go our way, fair enough, but you know, just not good enough. And it's it's too often that we have been simply not good enough to win football games you know not scoring again is another concern conceding three goals is another concern in itself three poor goals too really um we've got four games to save ourselves as i know that you guys have as well um it, it it's it's a right scrap down there there's so many teams and you would think with 46 points you'd be all right but i'm sat here thinking we need four more and unfortunately with you guys up next, we're looking at this game as, well, for me anyway, this is the biggest game that I've had since I've been a Stoke fan. And that's a good 15 wow. years or so. So this that's is bold absolutely bold massive. Wow. Yeah, well, it is. It, it, yeah. it is. Yeah, well, you, you kind of touched on it a little bit there. Did you come into the, and, and I want to go right back a little bit before we go back into the sort of the, the running that we've got. Um, did you come into the season feeling any sort of trepidation? Were you optimistic as a, as a set of fans? Were you expecting more than you got? Or was there just some sort of content, expectation that you'd be mid-table? Well, we, we, we have been for the last sort of four or five years, you know, since we've come down from the Premier League in 2018, we thought we'd bounce straight back up at the time. Um, but since we've been average at best you know we've finished between 14th and 16th in the last five seasons um and that's for a multitude of reasons you know poor signings um poor planning financially um poor recruitment of managers i'm sure this is something that you guys can relate to as well and and you know i'm not going to bore you with it we just simply not been good enough for the resources that we have so we are used to average now. We went for a big reset in the summer. We signed 21 players. Um, and we thought it would take time to gel. But I didn't think it would take 42 games for us to still <laughs> be here say. and sat and going, you know, to, to still be gelling. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 really poor. Don't be wrong. We've, we've had some guys from overseas who you can understand may take a bit of time. You know, Andre Vidigal started really brightly, scored. He was five goals in his first five games and then has scored two since. Um, we've had 
uh, who am I thinking? Mehdi Lloris has done reasonably well as a as a quite a physical option out on the wing, but he's not played very many games. Um, funnily enough, it's some of the players like Bae Jun Ho, who's been excellent, you know, as a 20-year-old coming into the league for the first time, has showed so much maturity. Wouterberg has been our best player as well, has stepped in as captain a few times as well, looks a real leader and for someone who I think, you know, he's only 22, he will go on and play Premier League football, no doubt. Um, it's been our older heads that have let us down. You know, Ben Pearson, Daniel Johnson we brought in. Um, you know, we had Dwight Gale and we've had to release him just for how poor he's been over the last year and a half. It's it, We've been let down by the guys that we're supposed to be able to rely on. And here we are with four games to go and we... You know, there's a high chance we'll get relegated, and it should not be that way. We didn't think it would ever get this bad. We thought it might take a bit of time, and it might not be this season that we're pushing, but this is completely down the other end from where we expected to be at the start of the season. Well, that, that, that kind of leads me in um, to, to a graphic I'm going to put up now. We've got on, on our podcast, we've got um, a little bit of a graphic we'll put on our socials this, this week. Where you can see the sort of two, four, six, the bottom eight there, the last four games in terms of the running that we've got for the benefits of, of the people that are going to be listening to this on on audio. Uh, we've got the runnings from Sheffield Wednesday, Huddersfield, Millwall, Birmingham, Stoke, QPR, Blackburn, uh, and Plymouth. Looking at that, um, and you've just made a bold statement. You've said earlier on that you're, you're quite worried. Um, do you think you've got one of the tougher runnings there? Um, I think on paper, actually. When you compare it to, you know, the likes of Blackburn there, like they really do have a tough run, I think. But on on paper, I was okay. I mean, we should be able to give a game to you guys. The same to Plymouth at home, you know, with with, with all the history we've got with the manager too, there's a bit more spice to that game than there'd usually be. Southampton, you would imagine with two games to go and being where they are, would be on the beach. Um, and Bristol City the same, last, last game of the season. And again, we're at home. So you would think... The running is, but having said that, you know, I look at the teams on the screen at the moment and we've given three points to you guys. We've definitely given points to Birmingham, uh, perhaps even six to QPR, uh, maybe three points to QPR, six to Blackburn, three to Plymouth, three to Birmingham. We, Everyone on that screen, we've given at least three points to this season, I think. Yeah. So, so it's the teams in and around that you've struggled against. And and hence why we have probably got ourselves in such a bad situation, you know. And yeah. and to be fair, I I imagine it's the case for everybody in this list. To be fair, it's the case that everybody's been handing each other points, and yeah. you, we would have been so much better off, for example, if we'd have lost to Hull, lost to West Brom, and beaten you guys, yeah. <laughs> and beaten Swansea, and beaten Millwall. But we we that's just not the way it's worked out. So that's why I'm worried because the games we've got left, we should be winning and they're exactly the games we're probably going to lose. Yeah, it's, it's interesting listening to you talking about, um, you know, the, the the points that you've dropped and the teams that you've dropped the points against. And we've been in a very similar situation where we, for example, gone to, we went to Leeds at the start of the season and took points off them. We took points off Leicester at home. Um, all right, Southampton wiped the floor with us twice, but the, the the teams up and around in there that we we we're putting some stronger performances against, and then you're going into teams such as your Millwalls, where it's been um, really abject, and I I do worry that we're going to look back on a four nil home reverse because our, our goal difference ain't great. I think we're we're minus thirty one if I remember rightly as we're sitting here tonight, um, and it's those, and it seems to be happening with everybody everybody that's around us because everybody's beating each other. And it means that even though we've been in <laughs> we've been in the relegation zone since we game week one, and you know they, there's nobody that's pulled away, and we've actually clawed back. And now the teams that are sort of dogfighting above that relegation zone, are, nobody nobody sort of getting out of it, are they? No, they're 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 really not. And it, from a neutral point of view, if you're Bristol City or if you're Middlesbrough or Sunderland, you must be laughing and looking at what's happening around the league, and it. The relegation places are almost changing every week. You know, we've had a turn in there. Birmingham have had a turn in there. I think Huddersfield have slipped into it. QPR have obviously been in it for a while. Um, I, and I'd be very surprised if there's not a new team like a Blackburn or a Plymouth who drop in there at some point during this mm. last four games as well. Um, <laughs> you guys are funny from 
I think our point of view because you're right, you seem to have got some really good results against some great teams and then you know the next week and we see the results of results that we'd we'd have expected from the the first few game weeks of the season under under Munoz and I, we don't know what we're coming up against really that's the tricky thing you know we don't know what team we're going to be like we've been so inconsistent this season um it would have been better if we were rather and we were just very poor <laughs> um <laughs> But, you know, the same for you guys. We don't know what Sheffield Wednesday team we're going to turn up and face. Now, I don't know if there's a uh, a certain style you guys prefer to play against. I know we certainly prefer to play teams who are on the front foot. You know, if we see a team that sits back, we we don't seem to be able to break those sorts of teams down. And that's why we drop those points, those teams who are lower in the table. But it... <laughs> I think that's part of the agitation. I could accept it if I thought that we were going to win or lose on Saturday, but there's you know such uncertainty around it that God knows, God knows. It's it's the hope that kills you, isn't it? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of our style of play, um, I think the managers made some noises today about how we've managed to get ourselves in the conversation for staying up, and he's, he's, he's attributing a lot of that to the fact that. He is such a, a dynamic and progressive manager. Um, neutrals would read what he'd said at, uh, at his press conference this afternoon and, and maybe thought he was being a little bit arrogant. Um, and to an extent, he probably is. But he's talking about the fact that he's got an adaptability. There's been times where we've set up and sat deep. There's been times where we've played on the front foot. Um, I would imagine, not to not to worry you and not to sort of go in there with a, a big, bold statement, but I would imagine that he will have a game plan on Saturday and he'll know how you, you guys will be setting up. Um, we've flitted between a four at the back and played a three at the back. I actually think at the moment we're probably better off playing the three. Um, we were 2 0 down at half time on Tuesday night, and it wasn't great against Norwich. But at half time, he made four substitutions um, and brought on Callum Patterson as a battering ram who absolutely just tore through people and gave it your old school 100% energy. Um, and it was very sort of different to the style of football that we've had under, under Danny Rule, but it worked. And we've got two, two goals from two set pieces. Um, I don't think we've scored from a set piece all season. And his style of play changing has, has, has really sort of affected what we did on Tuesday night. And it's it's got our tails up a little bit. Um, I do think, to, to sort of temper all of that, uh, if, I, if I can, I, I do think um, we need to keep our feet on the ground. There's an expectation that, you know, having done the hard work against Norwich and our next two games, if I just put the graphic back up, um, our next two games are against yourselves and Blackburn. And then we've got West Brom and Sunderland. Um, you know, the noises from us arrogantly are that if we can get four six points out of the next two games that, that that puts us in with a shout um so yeah we'll 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 see where we are you you know um the last time we played you uh it was one of alex neil's last games i don't know if it was the game where it, where it he was went the game. um yeah I, I, looking at the form guide before that you, you, you it hadn't been great i think you lost at least five or six on the bounce um, and then you changed the manager, you brought Schumacher in, um, you had that new manager bounce to an extent where you went on a little bit of an undefeated run. Um, what are your thoughts on the new manager? Um, my thoughts on the new manager is I like him. Um, I like the fact that he seems to be quite a warm character. You know, we've had some quite cold managers here at Stoke City over the last probably 10 years, maybe, going back to Mark Hughes, who wasn't a very warm character. Tony Pulis was probably our last warm manager, someone likeable. Um, Nathan Jones was likeable at the time. But you look back and good Lord, um, now we hate him. Um, but Schumacher, I think we can really get behind. Um, he, I think he is clearly learning. Um, he's a good coach um, and he's been able to get the best out of some individuals. Um, but clearly, systematically, he approaches some games completely wrong. Um, we went into the Norwich game, for example, and they knew that if they went down their right hand side, you know, Sam Byram and I can't think what the lad on the right was at the game. Was it Boris Hines? I'm not sure. Um, mm. They knew that if they flew down that right wing, we didn't have a left back and we were playing Lyndon Gooch as a light left wing back role got completely torn apart every single time. And we conceded three goals, I think, based off that. Um, but then if we are able to hang in the game, 
he, like your manager, is able to change the game. You know, he 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 must be up there across his time between Plymouth and Stoke this season, up there for the most substitutions. Certainly the most changes game to game. We have no idea what starting eleven is going to come out on Saturday. And he's probably going to make four or five subs relatively early on too, if he thinks that something has gone wrong. Um, I think he's the right sort of manager to a point, but he's probably come at the wrong sort of time. If we were happily mid-table like a Bristol City were, and we were looking to you know just, just go to the next step, I think that that... Schumacher would be the right kind of person to appoint. But when we appointed Schumacher, we were two points off relegation. We, you know, confidence was through the floor. You know, we lost to you guys in the 90th plus three, I think. Mm. And if we take the games before that, we'd lost to QPR in added time. We lost to Plymouth in added time. Pretty sure we can go back a couple of games. We certainly conceded in added time. You know, that, that wasn't an ability thing. That was a mentality thing. And the confidence was on the floor. Schumacher's done well to do a little bit better mm. but uh, he's he's just not quite done enough i don't think and there was a six or seven game period where we were just losing every week with him and it's because he was trying to do too much too soon playing with inverted fullbacks and it, it just wasn't working he's found his pragmatism in recent weeks and actually over the last seven eight games if you'd taken our form over the whole season we, we'd be doing pretty well. And I think that mm. form is sustainable. Yeah, we'd lose mm. the odd, odd game to Swansea or whoever along the way, but we got some good results, good performances. It's too late, though, I think. And it, it, we are now in four huge games. If you, go, if you do go down, and I'll be honest, I don't think you will. I think you'll be all right. And with all due respect for us, it's a must win. And for, for the regulars on our podcast, I'm, I'm the person that says... The game isn't a must win until it's the last game of the season and we need three points. But I do feel on, you know, coming out of last night's results with the teams around us and, and our result on Tuesday, um, I do feel that we need three points on, on Saturday. And if we get them, I don't see you guys dropping in because I think there are other teams in and around um, that we may come on to speak about uh, momentarily that are probably in a, a slightly worse position than you with a slightly more difficult running. Um, however, if the if if the worst does come to the worst and you do go, do you think you'll retain the manager? Do you think he's the guy to get you out of League One if you do go down? I mean, he did get promoted last season with a hundred odd points, so you would hope. So, <laughs> oh, you know, I know. Doing this <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sure you do. Um, you know, like look what Ipswich Town are doing this season, and he was able to finish above them. So mm. you 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 would think that he probably knows the league. You would think that the squad would undoubtedly get another reset because of the high wages we currently have. You know, there'd be a big player turnover. You would think that he'd be able to bring in a team that could compete at the level and get us promoted again. Mm. Whether we actually do that, I, I don't know because this club has a funny... <laughs> John Coates is a... Or, or the Coates family, rather, have been good custodians of Stoke City on a financial point of view on a loyalty point of view and and they are 100 percent committed to the football club their decision makings in football in terms of the last five years have been dreadful and we sack our managers when we shouldn't be and not sacking them when we should be and bringing in the wrong players and the wrong manager at the wrong time and signing players when we shouldn't be and you know we've not signed a left back for goodness knows how long that's been able to play 20 odd games and yet we're signing four strikers this summer that we didn't need, that we're not playing with now. So it's been haphazard management at best, and it will be negligence that will send us down. It'll be the same sort of negligence that means, you know, we sack S Stephen Schumacher, we bring in some other manager who we think is better than him, and mm. the same sort of thing happens again. We don't go up. So I can't say that I trust us to make the right calls, and that's why, as much as I think he, he he would be the right man, I don't know if we necessarily give him that opportunity or not. Right. That's that's really interesting because I'm with you. I'm, as, a, as a neutral and outsider, I think he's absolutely the right person. And I think in a, a, a team that goes down this season will need stability. And, you know, Rotherham will go down. Rotherham will need a rebuild. I think, again, they've got a manager that is proven at that sort of level. Um if he can clear the decks, they, they, they'll be a tough team to get out of the league next year as well. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see where things go there. Um, I don't know if you're coming up on Saturday. 
uh, to the game yourself? I'm not. No, I'm. Um, I'm meeting a friend in Liverpool. Unfortunately, unfortunately, fortunately, no. I don't have a great away. <laughs> I, 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 I have seen two away wins in my time, and both have been in the West Midlands. So, right, fans will be glad that I'm not going. Actually, <laughs> right. Okay, okay. But when, when, when the Stoke fans and the Stoke team do turn up, um, who? Who's the players that we need to be looking out for? Uh, I must admit, I've had a quick look beforehand. Vidi Gala side, um, there's not anybody really that sort of sticks out. Is there, is there anybody that we really need to be looking out for? And it's funny because you say Vidi Gala side, but since August, he's been very poor. You know, he's, right. he's barely been in the team. He scored one goal in January and a rebounded penalty, I think, last week. Right. Okay. And that has been all we've seen of him for the last few weeks. And this is why we are where we are. Um, he's right. he's scored six goals. He's not playing very well. Hasn't done since August. Ryan Mai is the next top goal scorer. And he <laughs> has had three long-term injuries, I think, this season. And he's also fell out of favour with the manager during sort of period of January to March, you know, just through discipline, missed out on the team. So he's played about probably, I don't know, a dozen, a dozen and a half games. And... Managed to score, looks lively, but again, he's been out of the team and he's ruled out for the rest of the season as well too. I think our next top goal scorer is genuinely own goal, so <laughs> we're, we're we're relying on you to put it in your own nest on Saturday. Um, we've got we've got one or two players that can do that. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness for that, because the rest of the players are on the ones and twos, and um, yeah. yeah, we make defensive mistakes, and that's that's. You know, every team does that. It's our attacking threat, so we we look blunt, and that we we looked very blunt against Swansea. Albeit ha having some great play against West Brom, part of that was through my uh, Ryan May, who was playing, who is now injured. Um, players to watch out for, I would say Bajan Ho, who's been, as I said, a real revelation for his age this season. Been one of our standout players. But I think he's just been called up to the South Korea under 23s to take part in the Olympics. So whether he's actually there for Saturday's game, I have no idea. Um, I would say uh, Wouter Berger, too, who, uh, I, again, one of the buys of the season, probably from any club, I think it's just so, it's, it's such a shame that we're doing so poorly because he would, you know, be standing out head and shoulders as one of the best midfielders in the league. I say that. He, got banned for a couple of games for accumulating too many yellow cards a couple of weeks ago. And since mm. then, he's not really stepped into the midfield in the same way. So he's been playing pretty poorly. Um, Josh Laurent has looked good at times, but he's going through a bit of a sticky patch again. Lewis Baker looks to be probably our most genuine goal threat at the moment, but he's not been in the team for the last couple of weeks. Luke McNally and Michael Rose have had a good centre defensive partnership, but Again, they looked shaky against Swansea. Um, our fullbacks are mostly injured. Keanu Hoover's playing quite well. I would say he's one of the players most in form for Stoke at the moment, having scored mm. and assisted a couple in his last few games. Mm. Danny Leverson, again, decent in goal, but has like has his on and off games. Yeah. That's what worries me about heading into the last four or five games. You know, We don't have anybody in form, really, that can hurt teams. So I'm... I would say look out for Keanu Hoover at right back, but aside from that, I, I, yeah, I'm with you. I'm not sure either. <laughs> I'm I'm genuinely looking forward to Saturday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> but then this is the thing, right? We turned up and we rocked up at Hull and we thought that we were going to get smashed. You know, a, a, a team that attacked down the wings, our, our biggest weakness with pace and power and skill, and we thought that we were going to get absolutely thumped and we won 2 now. This right. is Stoke, right? We yeah. we win when we don't expect to. So uh, this yeah, is why can... Saturday's game is so strange, so so strange. Did you not did, did you not draw with West Brom last week as well? We did, and we came from two 0 down. Having so here's a stat for you: the last time we scored an equaliser at home before, well, we played Huddersfield. On Easter Monday, we managed to equalise against them. We equalised against West Brom too after being 2-0 down. The previous equaliser before that at home was December 2022. So over a year and a two, three months, we hadn't scored an equaliser. So basically, if we can Once see first, game yeah. over. Yeah, yeah, Just heads yeah. drop. Game plan doesn't re 
revive, you know, that's it. And that's the key mm. for you guys. If you score first, yeah. you're probably going to win the game. But right. then we've seen in recent weeks that we can actually turn around a deficit. There's so many nuances to this game, and that's why it's going to be so hard to predict for anybody trying to predict. And it'll be, from a neutral point of view, perhaps not stylistically, but a really interesting game to keep an eye on. Yeah, I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. Um, okay, before I let you go, um, can I trouble you for a, a prediction? Give us what you've got, what you think. Based off all that, you want me to give a prediction? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to see if your prediction is consistent will, with your, your, your forecast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I tell you what I will say. I think that if we are to stay up, we need to be one of you guys. You guys are to stay up. You've probably got to beat both us and Plymouth and and Blackburn. You've got after us. Blackburn, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you beat Blackburn. both of them, I think you'll stay up as well. Um, mm-hmm. Based on that. I'm going to say we'll lose to you guys, but beat Plymouth, and we'll both stay up. <laughs> How's Listen, that? I'll take, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I thought you might. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for, um, I'm gonna go for a narrow win. I don't think it'll be quite as comfortable, um, but I do think momentum's on our side. I thought we, we played particularly well against QPR. We we came back second half and did what needed to be done on Tuesday night, and I think we yeah. we will take that momentum into Saturday, and I think there'll be a, a, a fairly fairly decent crowd there so i'm looking forward to it and i, I do think we'll we'll probably sneak it maybe 2-1 3-1 um but i do think we'll, we'll we'll come away with the three points and that will be the first time potentially other than 45 plus one minute against leeds united the other week and um, that we'll have been out of the relegation zone since the first game week um which wow, at this stage would be, would be would be absolutely that's mental it. yeah it's the um, time ben, to do it you no, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, it's the time to do it. You're better to peak now than you are peaking in January, trust me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So it, it all seems to be falling into into place, so hopefully hopefully, we'll get there. Um, before I let you go then, um, you, I should have asked you this before we came on. If you've got any plugs, any podcasts, any any sort of anything you want to promote, the floor's yours. Oh, um, so I do technically still have a podcast. It's called the YYR Files. It's very different to this podcast. I sort of, it's a bit like a Jonathan Ross show, but for Stoke City fans. So I talk about okay. their, their, their lives as a Stoke City fan. Um, I haven't recorded an episode in over a year just through personal circumstance, but the back catalog's still relatively fresh. If you want something a little bit different, particularly if you're a Stoke fan listening, I suppose really. But, um, other than that, I like the Wizards of Drivel. I like every step along the way. There's loads of uh, Apotolytics as well. Rory does the uh, the, the Booth and Rawcast. There's loads of good Stoke content out there if people want to find it. Um, and I'm sure they'll be doing plenty of previews for this game as well. So um, you're not missing out. There's, there's <laughs> plenty of content out there if you want it. Brilliant. Ben, uh, thank you very much. You've done a good 25 minutes there. Really appreciate your time. Cheers. <laughs>